Forest, how are you? So, our story today is, is in 1 Samuel 8, and this is a story about um, Samuel and his sons, and Israel, who wanted at that time a king. Now, Samuel is a very old man, and he had two sons called Joel and Abijah. He's now going to come back and he's going to talk more 
about our story. Hello everyone, I've got a question. Why did God's people want a king? We've just seen in the story that they were asking for a king, but why, why did God's people want a king? I wonder if you could think about that with your families. Maybe, maybe have a look back over the story that we've just heard from Kate and ask yourself, why did God's people want a king? Well, there are two re reasons why God's people may have asked for a king. Firstly, they didn't believe that Samuel's sons would make good leaders. And secondly, they saw that the other nations, they had kings and they wanted to be like them. They were fed up of not having a king in charge and all the other nations that had kings like them, they wanted to be the same. And they, they, were, they had enough of standing out and being different because they were following God's way. Well, when they asked for a king, they were rejected. No. Well, when they asked for a king, they were rejecting God's plan for how he wanted them to live their lives. But I don't think they were really thinking about it. So a question for us all to think about is, what do you think makes a good leader? Something that you can do with your families is find a piece of paper and you can write down the different things that you think makes a good leader. It might be being a good listener or being a good speaker when they talk to people. It might be being kind, being humble. And all those things you can think about with your families and you can maybe write them down. So now, children, a question for your parents. What do you think is the hardest thing about being a leader? Ask your mums and dads or whoever is around. What is hard for them when they have to lead? Have they got any experiences that was maybe more challenging when they had to lead a group of people? Well, God knew that no human king would ever be a good a leader as he is. But he did honour his people's request and he gave them a king when they needed it. Well, when we look at the human kings and leaders in the Bible, we see that none of them are perfect. And they all made mistakes and they have flaws in who they are. But that's okay. And we see in this story that that's okay. But we can also see it in us that that is okay. And in the things that we do and in the different activities or when we might be a leader in a situation, we are going to make mistakes and we're going to have flaws. But it is okay. And God is still going to use us and wants to use us no matter how imperfect we are. We are perfect in God's eyes. So I'm going to pass over to Tina and she is going to lead us in our prayer for this week. So have a good week and I'll see you soon. Hello everyone. It's prayer time now and it would be good if we could think a little bit more about kings. Because the people in the Bible reading today wanted a king, but we have one, don't we? We have a queen. We've got the Queen of England, but we've got a king. We've got King Jesus. We've got God. And when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, a prayer that we use and call the Lord's Prayer, in that prayer, he said, your kingdom come. And what he was saying was, not just God being not on earth, but someone we pray to and someone in heaven. But God, we want your kingdom to come now, where we are. So when we say the Lord's Prayer and we say your kingdom come, wherever we are, we're saying, God, we want people here to know about you, to be part of your kingdom, to live like you want them to live. And we are part of God's kingdom too. If you've got the sheets that we sent you this week, I've sent an extra sheet through about that. And you can have a look at that perhaps with your parents or with your brothers or sisters. Have a look at it and see what you think. So what would it be like if we prayed your kingdom come in lots of places? I've been looking at a map of where I live, looking at it on Google Maps, on my iPad. 
And I don't live very near the church. I know some of you don't live very near the church and some of you do. But I live on Goldsworth Park. And on Goldsworth Park, there are places like schools and la uh, the lake that lots of people go to play around. There's the shops. What would it be like if everybody in those places knew God as their king and lived like Jesus wanted them to live? something you can do. You could go for a walk around where you live and you could pray for God's kingdom to come in the places you are, in your street, perhaps if you live near your school, if there's shops, there might be a doctor's surgery or something like that. Perhaps you could talk as a family about going for a walk and praying your kingdom come as you go. I've done a little bit of that, so let's see where I go. So this was the first place that I thought I'd come. And I don't actually live here, but I do work here sometimes. Sometimes because I've been at home a lot, but now I'm back in the building and I'm doing Bethany Babes here during the week. And soon I hope I see all of you here. So the most important thing about God's kingdom is we want it to be everywhere, don't we? So King Jesus can be everywhere and we want it to be here. So I'm just going to say, Father, your kingdom come in this place. Let Jesus be known in this building and around this building. And Lord, when we're here, let us always put you first as our king. Let's see where I go next. So now I'm back home, I'm outside my house and you can see some of my neighbours' houses. And obviously I want everyone in my road to know Jesus. So I am going to pray here, Father, your kingdom come in Langton Close, which is the name of the road that I live in. Okay, so I've come a little bit further now. I'm at the garden centre. Oh, it's lovely Christine there that works with us. And I thought this would be a good place to pray for God's kingdom to come. This is just down the road from me and lots of people come here. So I'm going to say, Father, in your name, I ask for your kingdom to come in this place and for people to know you here. Amen. So here I am down at Waitrose and you saw the garage and the hospice and the doctor's surgeries and St Andrew's Church and the shops and the pub and they're all places where people come to do various things. All places where people work every day, some places where people are cared for every day. The church, just like our church, hasn't been able to be together as much as they'd like to be. So let's pray for God's kingdom to come in this place. Father God, thank you for Goldsmith Park Centre and thank you for all the people who work here and visit here. And Lord, I ask that your kingdom come in this place, that people will come to know you and to live in your way. And this will be part of your kingdom on earth. Thank you for those people who do know you that are here now, the people at St Andrew's Church and the people who are Christians and work in the various places. So that's my little trip to Colesworth Park. There's lots of other places I could go. I can go to the lake, I can go to other places, but I'll tell you in the next bit of the video how I'm going to pray for those places this week. I cheated a bit, didn't I? Because I went off in the car to church as well as having a little walk around where I live. And there's still lots of places on my map of where I live that I could pray for and pray for God's kingdom to be there. And I think that's what I'm going to do this week. 
I'm going to look at the map of where I live. And even if I don't get a chance to walk out to all those places, I'm going to pray for God's kingdom to come there. So now I'm going to finish with a prayer that's on your sheets. Perhaps if you've got your sheet printed out, you could get it ready and read it with me. It's a prayer for us to say together. Dear God, thank you for the story of the Israelites asking God for a king. Thank you that even though we make mistakes, you can still use us as leaders in this world. Help us to listen to you and be guided by you, recognising you as King of Kings. We pray for all those who are leaders in our schools, in our workplaces, in our churches, in the nation and in the world. Would you be with them and help them to live for you and to serve you this week? So, Amen. Have a lovely week. Have a look at the sheet about being part of the kingdom. And perhaps this week, when you go places, you could pray your kingdom come. I think I told some of you that when I used to work in school, as I walked through the door each morning, I used to say, good morning, God. And that was partly because I wanted to remember that God was with me, but partly because I wanted God's kingdom to be in that place. There were lots of people there that knew God and knew Jesus and lots of people there who didn't. And it's good to pray for your friends that don't know Jesus, that they'll come to know him and know God and be part of God's big kingdom here on earth. Have a great week and I'll speak to you again next week. Bye for now.